Hey friends, uh, just a quick story for you. So there's this very fi famous violinist uh, at the time who requested that uh, a certain luthier make him a new violin. And so the luthier works very hard and he uh, spends a lot of time making this violin. And after the violin was done, he put it in the case and uh, with a new bow and actually hand delivers it to the violinist. The violinist, upon inspecting it, sees that it's a beautiful, uh, beautifully made violin, a uh, lot of great artwork, and he puts it up to his chin, starts to play it, and within 30 seconds, you could tell by his face and his body language that he did not like the violin. In fact, he hated it. So he takes the, the violin and literally chucks it across the room, and it hits the wall. Luthier, who had hand-delivered this violin himself, was crushed. He takes the violin, he places it back into its case along with the bow and leaves, thinking, okay, I'm just gonna destroy this violin, I'm humiliated. But after some time, he takes the violin, he looks at it, he realizes that it can be restored. And so he places a new bridge on it, a new chin rest and the tuning pegs. He, uh, he sanded down those parts where, that were scratched and, and where areas where he had to do a little bit of uh, extra uh, woodworking care, he, he was able to take care and fix it and basically restore it. Now a year later, the violinist thinking, well, I just I want to try again with this company. So he asks the luthier to make him a new violin. So he does and comes back, but he doesn't bring just that violin. He also brings the violin that he restored. And he places them before and he says, play this one first. And it was the old violin. The violinist opens it up, the case, and he looks at it. He says, oh, beautiful. He plays it and he says, man, this is amazing. The tone is great. I'd like to take this one. I don't even care about the second one. And the violin, the, the luthier says, I'm glad you've chosen to do so. <laughs> Just know that this is the first violin that you threw across the room. <laughs> and the violinist, obviously, he's ashamed because he realized, you know, how childish he had acted before and he apologizes. But, you know... I, I sometimes um, have to think about the fact that that first violin, I think in some ways the, vi the, the first violin represents us where perhaps, you know, people have done things to you or harmed you or taken advantage of you or you've made decisions in your own life where you feel like you are broken like that violin. The violin had suffered uh, damage to the bridge and the chin rest and the pegs and some, it didn't feel, it, it wasn't whole, and so the luthier literally had to go back and work on it. And I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of a verse in 1 Peter 5 where it says, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Our God, who created us as well, when we are broken, when we are hurt, also promises to restore us, to make us strong, to be firm and steadfast. So I don't know where you are at. Maybe you're doing well, but also maybe you are also struggling. You're mentally just stressed and challenging. Maybe you're having thoughts that are not healthy and negative. And I want to encourage you, if you need to, don't be afraid to reach out for help to someone that you trust. And I pray that as well. If you need prayer, let us know. We as a community will pray for you. It is God's great desire that all of his children be whole and healthy and happy. And as well to not only do that, to be a faithful representative in the world. So may you be faithful. May you, like that violin that was restored, sing wonderful praises for the Lord and to share God's message with others. Take care. Have a great week. God bless.